good morning students hope you are ready to observe the class shall we do one outlook regarding the previous day's portion so the previous class we have discussed regarding the classification of kingdom animalia right so kingdom animalia is a vast group so they have classified the kingdom animalia right so the kingdom animalia first it was classified as two sub kingdoms such as parasova and eumetasova and again the eumetasova is again classified as several grades and grades are classified as divisions etc right okay then this kingdom animalia consist of 11 phylums do you remember 11 phylums among this the 10 phylums being included as non chordates because there is no notochord or vertebral column so it is included as non chordates and the last phylum is chordates because it possesses notochord or vertebral column right okay among this non chordates the first seven phylums we have discussed in the previous class that is phylum porifera phylum nidaria phylum coelenterata and phylum platyhelminthes phylum ascalminthes phylum annelida as well as phylum arthropoda so this is the things we have discussed in the previous class and today's class we are going to discuss about the rest of these phylums as well as chordates fine So today we are going to discuss about the rest of these non-chordates such as phylum Mollusca, phylum Echinodermata, and phylum Hemichordata. Okay, then the chordates. The chordates we can say first we could see the fundamental features of chordates. Then we are going to discuss regarding the subphylums of chordates, right? Okay. So the first phylum is phylum Mollusca. So this is otherwise known as it is a soft-bodied animal. So the body is very soft. okay and let us see as we said in the previous class first we can look into the some general characters then we can pass on to this some specific features of this phylum mollusca is it clear okay so hope this general characters you may learn in the previous class so the every variety you may know already so then we can say everything soon and pass on right okay so the first one habitat so this mollusca varieties used to live in the aquatic as well as terrestrial okay an organization organ system level of organization hope you know so organ system level of organization am i right okay. then germinal layer is triploplastic triploplastic in the sense ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm will be there right and symmetry is bilateral symmetry bilateral in the sense the body will be divided as two in only one plane is called it is bilateral symmetry right and coelom it is true coelom is there and that's why it is a u coelom is right and the segment the body there is a no segment is there in the body so this is an unsegmented body right and digestion is complete digestion do you remember the word complete digestion the digestive system begins from mouth and it end with anus so the whole organs will do the same function digestion function is called as a complete digestive system right and then circulation is open type do you remember open type and closed type circulation open type in the sense there is no blood vessels to carry the blood that is called open type circulatory system closed type in the sense heart will be there and the blood vessels will be there to carry the blood right but here except this kids cattle fishes as well as this octopus sir open circulation is present all other mollusca animals clear okay then the respiratory pigment is hemocyanin this is a copper containing pigment hemocyanin is a respiratory pigment found in the blood right okay and six is it is a dioecious one so dioecious and monoecious i have discussed in the previous class even dioecious means so the sexes are separate male and female is separate monoecious means the sexes there is no separate male and female both gamete will be produced from the same organism is called monoecious is it clear okay so oviparous means it lay the sex right and the development is interite so the last class we have discussed what is interite and direct interite means the growth is passing through the larval stage is called indirect development direct development means there is no larval stage will be there that is called direct development but here it is indirect development which means it is passing through the larval stage so the larva of mollusca is called as biligate larva is it clear this is some general character about this mollusca and we shall be look into some special features fine So first we can see this some examples of this phylum mollusca. Then when I say this characters, you can understand it soon, right? So examples of mollusca here: octopus, snail, 
slab only you know, these are all the few examples we displayed here for final numbers fine then exoskeleton can you look into the figure so the body is covered by the calcareous shell calcareous cell calcium rich cell that's that is performing as a one exoskeleton for this mollusk animals already the body is soft body we say so the body is covered by this hard exoskeleton fine then the body parts so the body is divided as three main regions actually the body is, the total body is divided as three main regions the first one is head the second one is food and the third one is visceral mass okay food, head food and visceral mass so here in this right side where the mouth is there that part they considered as head region understand and other important areas they have highlighted with this yellow color right food that is called muscular food and visceral mass in the center and the uppermost region it is mantle so this is the part they have highlighted part of this mollusca right and first we can see the head so head is in this and the right side in the, where the mouth is there that part they say this is head region and it consists of the mouth and the mouth consists of radula can you notice and the radula consists of this teeth where uh, what is one rows of vertical teeth is there so this apparatus is useful for feeding understand so that is one of the important area they marked in this mollus and the second one the bottom it is called muscular food muscular food this is useful for locomotion and the central region it is marked the next part is the visceral mass okay visceral mass so this visceral mass is covered by this membranous layer that is mentioned as in a purple color and it is labeled as mantle can you notice so this visceral mass total visceral mass is covered by this a muscular layer that is mentioned as a purple color that is called mantle right and between this mantle and the visceral mass there is a cavity can you notice between this mantle as well as this visceral mass there is a cavity that is noticed as mantle cavity mantle cavity right and this mantle cavity consists of feather like gills can you notice the red color feather like gills this gills are called is a tinidia tinidia right and this is useful for respiratory function understand this gills are useful for respiratory function and in when one green color they have noticed it's known as a nephridium it is a excretory organ for phylum mollusca nephridium it's a excretory organ for phylum mollusca understand so these are the internal parts they have explained now is it understand okay so the next one is the sense organ so the sense organs of this phylum mollusca is eye tentacle and osteoporium so the first figure the eye and sensory tentacles are clearly visible right okay and the second figure denotes regarding the osteoporium which is marked as this brown color so this is one of the important sense organ because this is useful for the testing of the purity of the water so the water purity will be tested with the help of this sense organ that is called osteoporium it may be also asked as a two mark or three mark question fine so okay these are all the special features they have discussed regarding the phylum mollusca right shall we look into the next phylum so the next phylum is echinodermata right echinodermata and shall we see this first general features okay so its habitat is exclusively marine right exclusively marine in the sense it is living only in this marine water right and organization surely organ system level of organization symmetry both the symmetry is there radial symmetry as well as bilateral symmetry is there and adult animal is getting radial symmetry and larva is getting bilateral symmetry understand okay. and the circulation is open type there is no blood vessels are seen in this right and digestion is complete digestion because it start from mouth and it end with anus and excretory organ there is no special excretory organ is present for this phylum echinodermata right and the nervous system as well as the sense organs are poorly developed it is not well developed poorly developed then endoskeleton endoskeleton means the body inside it consists of the calcareous ossicles 
it is performing as an endoskeleton like a bones our body can store bones likewise this calcareous ossicle is present inside the body it performs as endoskeleton right and sex is diosis in the sense male and female is separate then reproduction is by sexual method and the development is indirect development because it is passing through the larval stage understand and example for this phylum echinodermata echinus antidon holothurian ophiothurix astrea so these are the few examples of phylum echinodermata and one of the very important system of this or character of this phylum echinodermata is water vascular system do you remember the canal system in the phylum porifera almost the same here it is known as it is water vascular system or ambulacral system right ambulacral system so here this system is useful for locomotion and this system is used for capture and the transportation of food and it is useful for respiration so this vascular system is performed with the help of this tube feet that is a major region which is found in this echinodermata can you listen this tube feet there so every arms of this starfish it consists of the finger like projections right so that is called as a tube feet so this tube feet is doing this water vascular function so the first one they said with the help of this tube feet it could be able to move that is is called locomotion and the second one this is collecting this food and it is transporting inside the body that's why this is capture and transportation of food and it is useful for respiration also because it may through the water current it will pass oxygen on all those things so that's why they said it is useful for respiration also understand okay then regeneration is one of the very specific character of this phylum echinodermata this is autonomy autonomy in regeneration which means so even if one arm is cut off from this animal the single arm may develop into one entire organism or uh, the ability to grow the lost or damaged body parts is called regeneration sometimes a severe arm can grow into a new organism if one by fifth of this central disc is present understand so there is a it has a high ability for this regeneration clear okay so these are this characters we have discussed regarding this echinodermata now we can look into this next phylum hemichordata so the hemichordata previous as per the previous classification this hemichordata they have included along with the chordata yeah, that's why they said this hemichordata but it, as per the recent classification this hemichordata they have put belongs to this non chordates because the hemi words hemi means in the word it was half so this hemichordata varieties consist of non chordate character also meanwhile it consists of the chordate character also that's why they have named it as a hemichordates and now it is belongs to this non chordates groups understand and now we can look into the general character of this hemichordata right so its common name is acorn worm or tongue worm okay then habitat is marine its marine habitat and tuberculous means it is used to live inside the burrows or u shaped burrows that is called as a tuberculous right and the germinal layer is triploplastic which means ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm is there and symmetry is bilateral symmetry and coelom real coelom is there and the nervous system is very primitive type this is not well matured one primitive type right and the sex is diosis male and female is separate okay then the development is internal sorry indirect development which means it is possible through the larval stage so the larva of this hemichordata is called ternaria larva right shall we look into the special features okay so first they said and one of the example for this this hemichordata is balanoglasses balanoglasses right and if we look into this balanoglasses figure we can easily visible the body is divided as three divisions okay and the head part is known as proboscis and the and the small part which is connecting with the next region is called collar region and the main part is called trunk region 
so the head is uh, sorry the body is divided as proboscis collar and trunk this is the three divisions of this body one main example for this hemicordata we can say balanoglasses right okay and now we can look into this few characters regarding this uh, balanoglasses the first one days it is a digestion digestion is ciliary feeding these animals are ciliary feeders they said which means can you notice the gill slits in the left side so these gill slits consist of ciliary cells so these ciliary cells will absorb this water and through this water it will bring this nutrient for this animal so that's why it is it is collecting this water through the movement of cilia that is that's why they say it is a ciliary feeding understand so this ciliary cells is present inside this gill slits so the, this ciliary cells will collect this water through the ciliary movement and through this water current it will get this food substance also and it will be taking the food understand and the egg, and the waste also will be eliminated right this type of digestion is called ciliary feeding right then respiration of course the gill slits we said now and the gill slits are useful for respiration also right then excretion so the excretory waste uh, will be eliminated with the help of this gland that is called proboscis gland or we they said it's a glomerulus gland so the first head part we said it's a proboscis right and the proboscis consist of the red color they have marked it's a glomerulus gland so this glomerulus gland is doing the excretory function it is eliminating the nitrogenous waste right okay then circulation so the heart also mentioned along with near this glomerulus it is uh, heart is present and the circulation they said open type open type means there is no blood vessels will be there or they said it's a lacuum type lacuum type means they said some a network of this vessels may arise from this heart that's why they said it's a lacuum type so this is the circulatory system for phylum hemicordata this is a very specific features for this phylum hemicordata right okay and now we can look into the next phylum it is chordata right okay so chordata general characters that we know very well because one chordata is this chordata consists of animals which is very familiar for human beings that's why we of course we may know this about this the general character of this chordates right so general character we can say habitat it is it may live in aquatic fresh water marine water and it, it could live in the terrestrial in every regions right okay then germ layer is triploplastic symmetry it is a bilateral symmetry and the coelom is eucoelomates and circulation is closed type right which means consist of heart and blood vessels then organization is organ system level of organization clear so the next phylum is chordata so here the chordata they mentioned this very specific feature that is a fundamental features that is notochord nerve cord as well as pharyngeal gill slits if an organism consists of these three character that will be considered as one chordata is it clear so this is a very three fundamental character for chordates understand and let us see when it develop or how it develop so here i displayed one figure that is not an animal actually it is not an fish so this is one of the diagrammatic representation for one chordate which means this figure explains where this fundamental character such as notochord and the nerve cord and the pharyngeal gill slit is present it is it is explaining about the location of this character understand okay so let us look into the first one right notochord actually notochord is present during the embryonic stage so during the embryonic stage this notochord will arise do you remember the word embryo so after the fusion of the gamete the zygote will be produced and the zygote become as an embryo and embryo consists of embryonic layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm right this is the things only we are discussing throughout this class right okay so from this embryonic layer the organs will be developed right so here during the embryonic stage the embryo will develop one rod like structure that is called notochord okay in every chordates okay but in some chordates they said for example lancelet as well as a lamprey this notochord remains or persists as a notochord throughout its life 
for example during the embryonic stage also it will be as a notochord during the larval stage also it will be as a notochord and during the adult stage also it will be as a notochord only understand but in some higher cordates they say this notochord will be replaced as a bone or vertebral column during the embryonic stage it will be as a notochord but in the adult stage it become as a vertebral column or bone okay and now we can look into the figure where this notochord is present for all the cordates okay so this figure consists of the four regions we can say uppermost region lowermost region right side and the left side upper part we can say dorsal side and the lower part we can say ventral side and the right side is this anterior region and the left side is the posterior region is it clear okay now we can see where is the notochord is marked there with the purple color in the center they mark notochord okay and this notochord is present below the nerve cord and above the pharyngeal glands am i right okay so that's why they say notochord is present ventral to the hollow nerve cord and dorsal to the pharyngeal gill slits this is the location for every cordates is it clear okay and the second one is nerve cord so look into the figure where the nerve cord is noticed as a yellow color they mark right it is one of the hollow fluid filled tube running from anterior side to the posterior side hollow fluid filled tubule running from anterior side to the posterior side so this is doing the nervous system function right so where it is located it is located above the notochord that's why they said it is dorsal to the notochord and ventral to the body wall dorsal body wall am i right okay then what is the role of this nerve cord in the during embryonic stage it will be as a nerve cord only but when it become as an adult this nerve cord will be converted as a in the head region it will be as a brain and from the brain this spinal cord may arise and from the spinal cord it will become as a nerves that is the role of this nerve cord understand okay and the third character is pharyngeal gill slits so this is an also one of the very important character which is present all the cordates so we could think also we don't have this gill slits right and of course this gill slits is present in all the cordates during the embryonic stage during embryonic stage it will be as a vascular or lamellar like a network it will be there right then in some cordates they say this pharyngeal gill slits will be remain throughout the life for example amphibians we can say fishes we can say this gill slits will be there for its respiration right but in higher cordates they say during embryonic stage this gill slits will be there but during adult stage it will disappear is it clear so these three is a fundamental distinct features for one cordate if it is there for an organism it will be considered as one cordate is it clear so this is one of the very important five mark question okay shall we look into the next so here we are going to discuss regarding the sub phylum of phylum cordata so phylum cordata consist of three sub phylums that is urocordata cephalocordata as well as vertebrata urocordata cephalocordata as well as vertebrata so now we are going to discuss regarding this three is it clear among this the first one is urocordata so this is otherwise known as tunicates right tunicate so how do they get this name as a urocordata in sense uro means the name meaning is tail which means it is one of the cordata right so what do you mean cordata it must to have a notochord or vertebral column so urocordata consist of notochord am i right okay but this notochord is present only in the tail region that's why they said it is a urocordates is it clear uro means tail so the notochord is present only in tail region clear okay its common name is sea squids and its lifestyle it will be as a sessile one what do you mean sessile one is a as a immobile it will fit into one particular place and survive that is called sessile or it will be free free movement will be there solitary means it will be alone it move as a single animal that is called solitary colony means it will move as a group that we discussed in the previous classes even right okay then habitat exclusively marine organism coelom is absent segment there is no segment is there and the total body is covered by the layer that is called test or it is known as tunic that's why they said it's a tunicates clear okay then digestion digestion is complete digestion it starts from anus and end with oh, sorry start from mouth and end with anus okay 
then circulation is open type open type already we said there is no blood vessels will be there so one ventral side of this body one tubular heart is located but there is no blood vessels to supply this blood that's why this is a open type of circulatory system okay then respiration respiration is by gill slits or clefts okay then sex is hermaphrodites okay then development is entire so the larva name is tadpole larva is it clear okay. and let us see this few examples for this and uh, urocordates one of this very familiar example is acidia and sulfa dolionum so here i displayed the figure it is acidia clear okay and they said is about the nervous system and the nervous system they said the second figure is for larva so the larva consists of double tubular nerve cord can you notice a dorsal hollow nerve cord so it is present during this larval stage double tubular nerve cord but when it become adult it may become disintegrate they said it is becoming as a single dorsal ganglion it will become as a ganglion when it is becoming as an adult stage understand okay then this is one of the very important character of this uh, phylum urocortida that is retrogressive metamorphosis okay retrogressive metamorphosis metamorphosis word already we know right so what is metamorphosis this animal may pass into various stages to become as an adult for example butterfly we can say from egg stage to larva larva to pupa pupa to adult so step by step this character is becoming more advanced from egg stage to larva larval stage the character is becoming advanced larval stage to pupa so pupa is getting the more advanced character than the larva am i right so that process we said is a metamorphosis process but here there is a retrogressive metamorphosis means it is in a reverse direction which means of course the larva it will be converted as this adult that is sure larva is converted as an adult it is developing as an adult but here they say during the larval stage it consists of notochord in the tail region it consists of notochord it is an advanced character am i right and they said the larva is a free swimming one it is very active during the larval stage but after the metamorphosis metamorphosis means it is passing the stage and it is becoming as an adult but when it is becoming as adult this notochord will disappear so it is becoming as is from advanced character to low character understand the, the notochord will disintegrate and moreover this this adult animal will be a sessile one it is not an free swimming one it is a sessile one which means it is immobile it will fit into one particular place sessile one so this type of growth or metamorphosis they said it is retrogressive metamorphosis clear so these are all the characters we have discussed regarding this phylum urocorita is it clear and the next one is phylum cephalocorita right cephalocorita so just we can see this and cephalo means the word head so uro means they said with the word meaning tail but here cephalo means they said with the word meaning is head right so here automatically we can understand the notochord it is one of the cordae so must be must to have this notochord or a vertebral column but in cephalocorda it consists of the notochord is it clear and the notochord is present only in head region that's why they said a cephalocordata is it clear okay then habitat it is as a marine marine habitat and it used to live in a shallow water shallow water means it is not so deep that is called shallow water okay and life stage it is burrowing animal it used to burrow inside this uh, land or that is called this burrowing animal circulation is closed type without heart circulation is closed type then and sex is dioecious so male and female is separate then the development is entire so development is entire in the sense it is passing through larval stages then chordate character of course the cephalocordata is one of the chordate so you mu it, this must to have a chordate very specific distinct features we say notochord nerve cord as well as pharyngeal gill slits so these characters must be there for this cephalocordates okay shall we look into this examples so example for the cephalocordate one of this very familiar example we could say it's ampioxus 
ampioxus not amphibians it is one of the animal ampioxus it is as one of the uh, cephalocardata variety right okay so this animal body they said it consists of this head region and as well as this trunk region right then so as we said the three specific characters notochord nerve cord and pharyngeal gill slit is clearly here displayed so notochord is marked as a red color one and nerve cord is above that can you see this one and below this nerve cord in the green color it is mentioned gill slits pharyngeal gill slits okay so that's all of, that is about this ampioxus then excretion for ampioxus it is a protonephridia so protonephridia is there so this is the figure of this protonephridia and this is useful for excretion clear then the last to phylum it is vertebrata so phylum vertebrate okay so let us look into this very common character for this phylum vertebrate that is a uh, vertebrata consists of the backbone surely the vertebra means the word is backbone so that's why the vertebrates must consist of backbone okay then the notochord is present during the larval stage notochord is present during the larval stage then vertebral column is present during for adult so during the larval stage it will be as a notochord and when it become adult it is becoming as a vertebral column okay and paired appendages are present as a, either as a fins or as a limbs okay paired appendages then skin skin consists of the scales or it will be feathers or hair or claw or nail these are all present on the skin okay protective uh, features then respiration respiration is going on with the help of this gills skin buccopharyngeal as well as the lungs it is a respiratory organs and the circulation ventral muscular heart is there for circulation and excretion is going on with the help of this kidney so this is the very common and very familiar these are all the characters we know character for this vertebra vertebrate vertebrate in the sense which consists of this vertebral column so this vertebrate subclasses of this vertebrate then classes of this vertebrate all those things we can discuss in the next class understand hope you understood and that we can look into some assignments fine so the assignments are what is tinidia what is sosperidium mention the uses of tube food and mention the common name of this hemicordata explain the location of the notochord in urocordates and explain the distinct features of phylum cordata so the first two phylum will be asked as either two mark or three mark question and the last one is a five mark question so as i say as usually this is a few important questions or highlighted questions but the questions will be asked from anyway at least these questions you cover during this period fine so we can meet in the next class until then thank you